next edition of Nisha Uncis- Uncensored Podcast. Ask me anything. That's what I'm going to start calling these because essentially they are a podcast because I talk for an hour and you never know what I'm going to say. And, um, you know, how you take my opinions, that's on you. They're just that. Opinions. On that note, let's, let's start this joke. You guys, happy Tuesday. Happy Super Tuesday. I hope you all did, did your civic duty and went and cast your ballots. I don't need to know who you voted for. That's none of my business. You don't need to know who I voted for. But we all do need to do our duty. Put in our votes. Your vote counts, okay? That's all I'm going to say about that. Welcome back. How's everybody doing? Dehydrated sofrito. How did that turn out, Serena? I've never dehydrated it. That's interesting. I guess that would make it last longer. That's a really good idea, actually. I've been super busy today. Uh, We voted. I took Toto to the groomer, which is his least favorite thing to do. He is hiding. I don't even know where he is. I probably won't see him for the rest of the day. Played with the kids this morning. Um, yeah. If you guys have questions, make sure you put the QQQ in front so that I can pick them out easily. I don't really have a specific topic to talk about today. I just wanted to chat with you guys because I don't do lives that much anymore on YouTube. I do them in the group, in the private group a lot, but I'm going to try to start doing them more because I enjoy them. Hey, Nelly, thank you. Yeah, I posted all the books that I read in January and February. (laughs) It was a lot of books. Uh, So if you want a good read, check out that list. Oh, wow. You got a, oh, there's a lot of questions. All right, let's see here. Kimberly, when I got pregnant end of last year, everyone told me to eat grains. I did and had a miscarriage. Oh, I'm so sorry. Quickly gained 10 pounds. Can the miscarriage have been caused by the grains? What from keto to grains? Um, Hard to tell what caused it. Uh, I will say most of the time it has something to do with egg quality more than what you were eating while you were pregnant. Um, But grains are definitely not important for pregnancy at all. Getting high quality protein and good nutrient dense food, that's what's important. Grains are not nutrient dense food when you put grains against literally any other food basically. uh, They lose every time. So I would say it probably wasn't the grains, but that's definitely misinformation that you were told there that you need to eat grains. Hey, hey, Lydia. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm at a standstill, no carbs, and can't lose. There's so many reasons why you may be stalled. This is something that we really dive deep into inside of our private community because you're able to send me private messages And I do way more live streams than we can, like, talk back and forth. Hey, Carrie. (laughs) Hey, Sarah. What are your thoughts on using avocado oil for cooking? I think avocado oil is one of the less bad ones to use. I use avocado oil when I'm making uh, pan-fried chicken or pan-fried fish or pan-fried anything just because it doesn't smoke as bad. And... uh, I don't mind it. I don't use it every day, only when I'm deep frying stuff. It just does better. I prefer bacon grease, but it does smoke a lot, and it takes a lot of bacon grease to deep fry something, and I don't want to waste my bacon grease on just one dish. So I use it. I think it's okay if you feel okay when using it. You know, this is all N equals one. Can you tolerate avocado oil? If you can, then that's fine, I guess, for you. some people want to stay away from it and only use animal fats but 99% of the time I am using animal fats and very like rarely do I use olive oil or avocado oil what is a good multivitamin liver what will you be having for dinner tonight steak and onions (laughs) on repeat um, Patrick says, my wife and I are both wondering what the tattoo on your collarbone says. I get questions about this a lot. I have a video actually that talks all about this tattoo because it's, um, meaningful 
like very, very meaningful. It says Excelsior, which means onward and upward. And I got it in 2020 after 2019 was a fairly awful year for me. And it just symbolizes um, getting back up when you've been knocked down, basically. Hey, hey, good. <clears throat> yeah, we're going to do that this week inside of the group, and then it'll be posted on Ken's channel as a replay. Marie, I just got a Freestyle Libre. Have you ever used a CGM? Yeah, I used them when I was pregnant because I didn't want to do the uh, glucose test, so I opted to just do my blood sugars and track my blood sugars, so I've used them. And I, I'm pretty sure I used a Freestyle Libre. It was interesting information, for sure. Madison, is element on the SAD diet helpful or hurtful? It's probably like a... Not, neither one. It probably just doesn't matter. Everybody needs electrolytes. No matter what way of eating you're doing, like electrolytes are important, period. But it's, it's not going to do anything really it's just to get you your electrolytes you can get the electrolytes from food too like potassiums and bacon potassiums and avocados but i like drinking element because it tastes really good at this point i'm mostly just drinking it because it tastes good when i first started lowering my carbs i took it to keep the keto flu symptoms down because it does really help when you have that big fluid shift in the beginning and then after that, I just kind of kept doing it. <clears throat> there are people who don't drink electrolytes and they just try to get it from their food. Scroll down. Let me catch up here. Does anyone have a fun question? <laughs> hey, Holly Bestie. Any trial updates? Uh, not really. We go to trial in June, and I won't know anything until then, I guess. Thank you. It is sparkly. I've had this for a long time, and this is the first time I've wore it. I was like, I really need, really need to wear that shirt. Hey, Carol, thank you so much for the super chat. There it goes. Thank you. Karen, I'm newly diagnosed with Hashimoto's Dagna, and uh, I've been low-carb for five years, now gluten-free. I'm losing tons of hair. Are there any supplements? I already put collagen in my coffee. I can take. Not really. I mean, collagen can support hair growth, but you need to be making sure you're getting plenty of protein that is from a true source of protein, meat, right? Hair loss can happen. Sometimes it's temporary. Sometimes it's hormonal. There's a lot of different reasons why you can have hair loss. It's not a black and white sort of thing. So you got to really dive in and figure out exactly why that's happening. Because if you've been low carb for five years and now gluten free, that's not like a huge difference in how you've been eating. So... It could be you need your thyroid medication, the dosage tweaked. could be so many things. The house is coming along. We have plumbing, heating, and electric going in this week and next week. And after that, it should start to go a little faster, hopefully. I don't know. It's taking forever. Ruthie, have you read The Teacher yet by Frida? It's her best one yet. So <laughs> that's on my list after I'm right now I'm reading Just the Nicest Couple, which is a mystery thriller. I'm underwhelmed with it so far, but I mean, I'm only, I'm not, maybe 50% through. So after I finish that, I'm going to start The Teacher. I'm very excited. I've heard amazing things about it. So yay. What do you do for the kids Easter baskets? So usually we do coloring books, stickers, and some like little Hot Wheels for Beckett. And Bonnie just likes the plastic eggs. She just likes to open them 
So <laughs> we just let her have the plastic eggs and she's she has a blast. We don't really go crazy with filling the Easter baskets up. I know some moms really make a big show. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I just don't do that. Of the Easter basket thing, we really try to make it mostly about going to church and, you know, all that stuff. So that's all, really. That's what we put in there. Coloring books and stickers, mostly. I use Giorgio Armani Luma something. It's linked on my Like to Know It profile. I've been using that for like three years now. It's my favorite. <clears throat> Janine, will you be showing us the house when you begin decorating? It will be so fun to watch the progression. Yeah, I'm sure I will bring you along for the journey. I posted, I don't know, a few weeks now, probably more like a few months ago on my Instagram, like the inspiration that I'm going for, like the vibe. It's very Beauty and the Beast Cottage slash The Hobbit, cozy books. Dark colors, kind of that academic, dark academia vibes. That's what I'm looking at right now. I haven't picked out paint colors yet, but I'm, I'm getting inspiration from Pinterest, just like everybody else. <laughs> Thank you, Maya. Judy, what are your thoughts on grass-fed powder collagen, or do you even do we even need it if we're on carnivore? Yeah, I think depending on where you're at in your journey, most most people don't need that type of thing unless you can't eat. You know, you can find collagen in in your meat. You can make really good quality bone broth that has the best kind of collagen in the world on there. So I would focus more on just getting getting it from your fatty cuts of meat and making homemade bone broth. I like to use chicken feet <laughs> or pig feet. <laughs> And um, oxtail makes a really good bone broth. If you have a pressure cooker, you can cook it more quickly, but you can do it on the stovetop. It just takes longer. <clears throat> Diana, can people take too much electrolytes and iodine? I mean, and anything is possible, but unless you're doing something crazy, probably not. Dr. Barry and Dr. Brownstein just did an interview on YouTube few days ago about iodine specifically and the importance of iodine and dosage uh, that people need. So if you want to go check that out, it's a pretty informative interview. Billy, I'm a nurse, work a busy 12-hour shift, yeah. Any advice on resisting temptation of carb sweets under stress? Be prepared, bring snacks. When I was working those 12-hour shifts, I brought like a, a miniature charcuterie board so I could just pick quickly when I was really busy. And <clears throat> pork rinds also and burger patties, like a burger bowl. And then... I would also, if, when I was working midnights, I would go to um, the Subway place and get just the salads, but make them put triple meat on there. And that's pretty much where I, I just stayed when I was working 12-hour shifts is snacky snacks, <laughs> like deli meat and cheese, which is not perfect, but it's, it's a nice, easy thing to be able to just throw in your bag and you don't have to keep it in the refrigerator it'll be fine sitting on the desk and lots of pork rinds <clears throat> chickens are good um I don't know if we'll get new chickens this spring we almost always get baby chickens in the spring but we're gonna be out of town a lot so we're going to Vegas in a few weeks I've never been to Vegas this will be my first trip um we'll see how it goes Vegas uh just has never been on the list of places I want to go, but we're going there for a fundraiser for Dave Feldman's um, collaborative science. I can't remember the name of it, but that's exciting. And then we're going a few other places in the spring and summer. So I don't know that we'll have time to do the whole baby teenager transition to out with the other chickens this year, but we still have many chickens. So it's totally fine. <clears throat> 
<laughs> Maya. Are there any fruits or vegetables that are safe to eat? Do you think plants are trying to kill us? No, I don't think plants are trying to kill us. I think plants have properties in them that could potentially, you know, it just depending on which vegetable, right? Beans are super toxic if you don't cook in the right way and really don't have any nutrition in them that you can't get from meat. And this is one of those questions that I'm like, what do you think? Maya, do you think plants are trying to kill you? Um, I think that's the, in the grand scheme of things, plants are not the biggest problem that we're facing as a society when it comes to health. I don't really care what anybody calls their diet. If everybody just gave up eating processed cookies, cakes, candy, soda, chips, anything that comes in a package and focused on eating meat, fruit, and vegetable, vegetables, eggs, and cheese that the <laughs> most health problems would, you know, start to fade into the distance. I think you should prioritize protein and do a carnivore 90 day elimination diet and reintroduce foods and see how they affect you. Everything is an N equals one experiment. I can eat onions just fine. I can eat garlic just fine. I can eat tomatoes on occasion just fine. Uh, and some people can't. And that, that doesn't mean that plants are trying to kill me, but <laughs> there may be some side effects for some people when they ingest certain kinds of vegetables. You really have to put in the work, do an elimination diet, take the time to reintroduce those foods appropriately and figure out where you fit. Some plants are toxic. Yeah, foxglove is toxic. <clears throat> I don't think tomatoes are toxic for everybody, and I don't think that diabetes is caused by vegetables, and I don't think metabolic disease is caused by vegetables. Sorry. I love Sally Norton. I think she's great, but <laughs> you just can't say things like plants are toxic and expect to make a difference in the health of most Americans. <laughs> I'm not here to just support carnivore. I'm here to support people getting as healthy as they can possibly be. And I don't really care what that looks like in words. If it's keto, if it's carnivore, if it's paleo, if it's ketovore. Are you improving your health? I know many, many people who are not carnivore have put many diseases in remission and they're thriving and saying things like plants are toxic is a radical thing to say and I'm here to bring a realistic approach to this way of eating full stop exactly so Serena who I know she can't eat tomatoes and nightshades. That doesn't mean that me eating them is wrong. That means that she has a an extreme reaction to them. I have an extreme reaction to greens. Like I can't eat I can't eat spinach. I can't eat collard greens. I can't eat turnip greens. I can't. I get physically ill. But I can eat onions and I can eat tomatoes. It's okay. <laughs> Right, plants are trying to survive. Yes. I have had chronic pain and many issues. Brain fog. I was literally nearly bedridden. You cannot say that as a blanket statement, sunshine. I'm sorry, it doesn't apply to everybody. And thinking that it does is... Knife. I didn't say that. Oxalates are a thing. And some people are sensitive to them. And some people are less sensitive to them. And some people seemingly have no reaction to them whatsoever. If y'all guys just want to eat meat, you probably should just stick out over with Dr. Berry. <laughs> I'm, I'm not the 
remove everything. And neither is he, actually. You know, he says it's a spectrum. I don't know if you guys hear that part. I feel like no one hears that part. It's a spectrum. There are people in our community thriving and still eating some plants. And some people really can't eat plants. If you have five autoimmune diseases, you may be very sensitive to lots of plants. Michaela Peterson, I truly believe she cannot eat anything but meat. But I'm not Michaela Peterson. (laughs) That's literally what I said, though. I said do 90-day elimination diet. That's what I said. What are you saying that I didn't say is my point. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, we can't... We can grow our own plants, so you can have a garden. You can have a garden in the backyard. You can shop at a farmer's market and find a local farmer who does not use that stuff. It is harder to do. you got to put a little effort in. But if you're truly that concerned, then you should be putting that effort in, I think. There it is, guys. <laughs> we knew we knew the dog Alan was gonna come, right? This. This is great. This is what I say all the time. If it, I eat what makes me feel good, I don't eat what doesn't make me feel good. And it's really just that simple. And to understand what makes you feel good, you really do need to do 90 days of an elimination diet. Keto is an elimination diet. It's a step in the step up from AIP and then ketovore is a step up from keto and then carnivore is a step up from ketovore and then lion is a step up from that. Yeah. Dude, the doggies. Toto is always so exhausted after he comes home from the groomer. He just sleeps all day. Uh, Rebecca, what type of sunscreen do you recommend for your face? If any, thank you. I don't use any sunscreen. Um, The only time I ever put anything like that on is if we are literally on an island somewhere and then I just use zinc oxide the mineral sunscreen that's just got zinc oxide in it you got to read the ingredients just like everything Uh, but on the daily I don't use any sunscreen and if I want to protect my face then I just use a hat like a big hat or a baseball hat spring has sprung here y'all and and it's The pollen is coming. There's my dad. Hi. Um, Ken, are there boxes in there that Poppy needs to grab? Yeah, I'm live. You want to come say hi? (laughs) Hello, people. (laughs) Oh, surprise. Pedro's here. (laughs) Uh, any advice for 85 year old mama usually make her gag burn out on keto chow I don't really know what that means Uh, you don't need to use keto chow if if it gives you any side effects um I don't know which keto, y'all, keto chow makes like a hundred different things. They make shakes, they make soups, they make electrolytes, they make potassium, magnesium drops, they make all kinds of stuff. So you really got to like tell me exactly what specific product you want me to answer your question about Dr. Berry's being goofy. Donna, how much iodine do you take per day and how do you take it? I take... About five drops of the 2% Lugol's iodine every day. And I put it in my coffee. Um, 
my iced coffee, my hot coffee. That's usually how I, I just put the drops. Just put the drops in my coffee. <laughs> He's the best, isn't he? Yes, Serena, thank you. So Dr. Barry just did an interview with Do is Gabrielle Lyon a doctor? Yeah. Dr. Gabrielle Lyon. Yesterday, is that up for is everybody to see? Lot. Yeah, so sh they talk a lot about adequate protein, how much protein, can you get too, too much protein, how much is enough protein? So go watch that if you have questions about how much protein you should be eating. Um, it, let me just summarize it. You shouldn't put too much thought into it, eat your meat. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Basically. Eat fatty meat and don't get caught up in in the in the weeds about eating too much protein and gluconeogenesis and anyways, they talk in depth about that in their little interview. So you can go check that out. That'll answer a lot of questions. Do health coaches make a healthy, comfortable income? Depends on the health coach. Uh depends on how well they know how to coach. If they do one-on-one -on -one coaching, if they do group coaching, uh, if they're active on social media, if they do it in person, you can make good money or you could not, you know, it's like any career. There's people who are going to be at the top tier, people in the middle tier and people who maybe struggle to understand how to do marketing. It's a small business, you know, it's a learning curve. You have to really work hard to build your brand and find the people who like you and understand which type of coaching you want to do. And a lot of people really want to do be the expert on everything. And you really need to find what you love to talk about. Like I love to talk about inside. Of, I don't do health. This is not health coaching, right? This is YouTube. And I'm just hanging out with you guys. Inside the group, I focus on elimination diets so people can find where they fit on the spectrum. And that's my, that's my brand of health coaching, focusing on that. <clears throat> Holly, Petra would love to take you guys turkey hunting. We saw some turkey this morning on my mom's farm when I took the kids over there. They were out in the big pasture, just hanging out. They didn't know Pedro was at home and ready to get a shotgun off the wall. I don't think it's turkey season yet, but it's coming up. It's coming in. Mm. Yeah, Lugol's will stain your teeth. You have to put it in a beverage. Do not put that directly into your mouth. Do not do that. They, they, uh, what brand? Dr. Brownstein has a brand that he recommends. It's capsules, right? Is it capsulated? Uh, Odorol. Uh, Odorol. So you might look into that if you're wanting to, like, increase your dosage. <clears throat> Is there a live in the community soon? I don't know. Maybe. I didn't look at the schedule today. <laughs> 6 p.m.? Oh, well, yeah, or 6 p.m. I thought she meant like maybe a coach was going live. We'll be live inside of our private community tonight at 6 p.m. If you want to join our community and talk more about the proper human diet spectrum, you can go to phdhealth.community and sign up there. Uh, $5 a month. That's all it takes to get you in. Come hang out with me and the other coaches. And you can talk more in depth about your keto carnivore, ketovore questions. I really hate talking about this on YouTube, honestly, because there's just not <clears throat> many questions that can be answered like that. I definitely need to talk to people more than just getting, you know, the bare minimum. That's, if, that's how a good coach works. You have to have like a conversation. You can't just know one thing, you know? Thank you, Holly Ann. Appreciate that. Hey, Greg, how important is it to only eat beef liver from organic grass fed beef? Um, if you can find grass fed and it's in your budget, then definitely do that. If 
If you can only afford chicken liver, then that's okay too. Are you ironing? Lindsay, I haven't ironed a thing. You know what I do? Here's how I iron. I throw it in the dryer. <laughs> I throw it in the dryer. I do use a steamer. I prefer a steamer over an iron. Uh, for sure. <laughs> I love that you're ironing. Will you start doing clothing videos along with the book reviews? Maybe, maybe. No matter what I do, like I try to get on here and have a live where it's like fun and I just get, I get bombarded with the keto carnivore questions, which that's fine. I don't mind answering those, but it's like, it's not that fun for people, right? <laughs> Lala, I hope that you have taken the time to click on the help desk and watch the video that shows you how to get your questions answered. It walks you through exactly how to send a message, how to ask me a message, a hello. How to ask Dr. Barry a message. If you are in the group and you have not watched that video, please go watch that video. It's your homework. Go watch that video. If you don't know what you're doing in there, go watch the video. There's a video tutorial that shows you every single thing you could possibly wanna know. And it's nine minutes long. <clears throat> Thank you, Joanna. We put a, a lot of work into the group, so I love hearing that. Hey, Caitlin, when should I give my baby girl a salt rock? She'll be 11 weeks on Thursday. Love you guys. So I don't really think you should give it to her. To her. It's not something you need to give her. Uh, but we just left ours kind of lying around and Beckett and Bonnie both find them. And love them. And so anytime she sees it laying around, she just grabs it. And she's always done that in Beckett too. And just licks it until she's done with it and then puts it back. It's not something, I don't think 11 weeks, probably don't, they don't need a salt rock. And when they start toddling around, crawling around, um, and can reach and put things in their mouth. And that's kind of when those things can be introduced. This is my poodle. This is Lily. She's a standard poodle. And she loves to be on camera. Don't you? Yes. And she loves pig ears. Don't you? Yes. And eggs. And anything that falls on the floor. <laughs> hey guys, yeah, if you hit that like button, hit the share button, share with a friend. If you like it, tell a friend. If you don't, keep your mouth shut. Yeah, I don't know that I could have a small poodle. They seem high strong. And Lily is the most chill dog. She's so smart. She's so intuitive. And she's just perfect. I, I probably will never have a different breed of dog. Of course, I have Toto. He's a little bitty tiny thing. And then I got her. And I've got two opposite ends of the spectrum. Thanks, Cena. Oh, Susan, I'm so sorry. Losing a dog is so hard. <laughs> Jen's cockatiel has eaten her salt lamp several times. So funny story. I have a, I had a salt lamp that was in the shape of a moon because I love moons. You guys know this. That's what my necklace is, moon phases. I have a tattoo of moon phases. I love the moon. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful creation, right? So I had the salt rock lamp. And when Beckett was two or three he started licking it because he figured out it was salt and I was like don't lick that I don't know where that salt came from that's not the kind of salt that we give you okay like who knows where that salt came from <laughs> I got it from earthbound so I don't know uh and then one day he took a bite out of it and I don't know how but he managed to break a chunk off and so we don't have salt lamps anymore because apparently my kids are too tempted to eat it and so, fair warning, if you, your kids like salt rocks, maybe don't get a salt rock lamp. The Great Pyrenees does not live in the house, thank God. He is with the sheep. He's out there. He lives with the sheep. That's his babies. 
and he is doing just great. We go out there and we give him treats and give him loves. He gets attention. Bonnie every day. I'll go see Daga. I'll see Daga. With Daga. With Daga. Whose name was Ragnar. But Beckett changed it to Daga. And he is now, now he's Daga. But I did name him Ragnar. <laughs> it's the same dog. He just doesn't go by that anymore. <laughs> Uh, how do you, how do you on fix the eggs for the animals? I can't get my cats to eat anything but the sugar filled can. Oh, how do you fix the eggs? So I scramble them in butter. That's the way they like them. Now the cats do not eat eggs. They don't like them. They like chicken and they like ground beef <clears throat> raw, but they do not like eggs or, uh, fish. I even gave them tuna one time. They didn't like that either. Now fresh fresh salmon, which is super expensive, they love, but I'm not gonna, sorry, cats. <laughs> You're gonna get what you get. <laughs> yes, I did train our Great Pyrenees from a puppy. You can see him in my older videos when we lived in Nashville. Um, when he was a little bitty puppy, he did live in the house for, I, I don't know, until he was nine months old, I think. And then we transitioned him outside and then we put him in with a sheep. Um, but yeah, he's a sweet dog. He's a sweet dog. I've tried to give them sardines. They're very spoiled. My cats are spoiled and they go, they're out, indoor, outdoor. So they go outside and they hunt and then they come back in and then they go outside and then they come back in. What should my one-year-old granddaughter eat? For the most part, her siblings are on the spectrum. Uh, high fat, protein, so butter, eggs, bacon, fatty meats, and whatever you can get her to eat. You know, that's real whole food, nutrient dense. And obviously her mom's in charge of that. So hopefully her mom is on board with, you know, the research that backs a high fat, high protein diet for those who are on the spectrum. <clears throat> did you get that water cup with graphics or did you add a stickers on? This is laser engraved ACOTAR quotes. And I got it from Etsy. It was one of my birthday presents from me to me. I paid too much for it, but here we are. <laughs> Yeah, Nellie, we're, we're going to be in San Antonio during this solar eclipse. I don't know if we'll be able to see it where we are because we'll be in like Castle Hills area of San Antonio. But we will be there and I'm going to get glasses for Beckett so he can go outside and look at it because I think this will be the first time that he'll actually be able to see one. So that's exciting. <clears throat> You can get really cool stickers on Etsy too, Joanna. Like anything. Stickers for anything. <laughs> like I have... Where's my iPad? I don't have it in here. I was going to show you. My iPad has stickers on it. My Kindle has stickers on it. I got stickers on everything. My computer has stickers on it. Mama Knitter just started keto three weeks ago. I'm nursing exclusively. I'm thinking I have some thyroid issues going on. How soon did you start to see the weight come off? So that's something that is super random and like there's no true time period where weight comes off after you've had a baby. For some women, breastfeeding helps them lose weight. For some women, breastfeeding doesn't help them and they don't lose weight until they start they stop breastfeeding. Some women, if they have thyroid issues, need to get those labs checked and get on a uh, levothyroxine or a desiccated thyroid, and that can help lead to more weight loss. But I would definitely get your labs checked first. See how they're holding up. If you have uh, antibodies, get the TPO antibodies checked as well, and then go from there. But don't, don't focus on losing weight. Focus on chilling. Give, the, give your body a year. And just eat good food, snuggle with the baby, take a lot of selfies, relax as much as you can, 
and just focus on getting nutrient dense foods into your diet. <clears throat> oh, Karis? Karis? Am I saying that wrong? I'm super jealous of you. Can I come? I want to go to an Akatar fourth wing party. <laughs> that sounds amazing. John, you did not have a baby. I'm talking about when you have a baby. <laughs> but also, like, everybody needs to give them their bodies a full year when you start lowering your carbs and going keto or carnivore. And, like, you need to give your body a year to get back into the swing of things. You've done decades worth of damage. Keep that in mind. <laughs> yeah, I know you didn't, John. I know you didn't. <laughs> Oh, <gasps> Brittany, you're forgiven. I forgive you. How are you liking it? I know how you're liking it. You're loving it. Who else is reading Akatar? And and on a level of zero to ten, how obsessed with you? How how obsessed are you with it? Vitamin P, yes. Do you give your dogs raw eggs with the shell? Well, no, but I don't have to because Lily will go find them on the farm and she will eat them if she wants them. She doesn't do that every day, but every now and then she'll go find some eggs outside that the chickens have laid in weird random places and she will eat them with the show. Karis 10, right? Is there another answer? I don't think there is. <laughs> Standard poodles are very smart, but can be protective. Yes, she's very protective, but that's why I, I bought her. I bought her when I was seven months pregnant with Bonnie and Ken was going out of town a lot. And I wanted a dog that <clears throat> could do some damage if somebody showed up, you know. So that's really why I got her. <laughs> yes, the Court of Mist and Fury. That's the, that's the one, right? I don't know. I loved them all. The only one I didn't love was the... Frost and Starlight. Just because it was like, nothing happened. It was a little bitty book. But it was fine. I still liked it. Yes, we will not be attending Hack Your Health, aka KetoCon, this year. Because we have other things on our to-do list this year. It is a wonderful place to go. For those of you going, I'm excited for you, but we will not be there. Sorry. We've tried to say this a bunch of times because I didn't want people to go specifically to see Ken, but it should say on the website, the speakers. So always, before you buy tickets, always check and see who the speakers are going to be because they used a video that showed Ken and me to promote this year's KetoCon. Hack your health. I love you. Have fun in the woods. Um, and like, we're not going. So that was kind of weird that they did that. I understand why they did that. Cause it was fun last year, but I feel like some people maybe thought that meant we were going to be there this year and we're not. <clears throat> That's weird, Penelope. I wonder if it was a specific type of butter. You know how there's strawberry butters and, you know, types of weird butters, but yeah, that's really odd. You always, don't worry about your butter because you know what kind of butter you bought and you can look on your butter and see how many carbs there are in it. So, you know, you can feel confident that the butter you're using does not have carbs in it. Who framed your prints? I've taken some photos of rustic barns and old homes that I like to frame. These, are these the ones you're talking about? So these I had, I took these when we were in Italy and Rome and Venice and Bath, and Stonehenge, and I took them all on my iPhone, and then I went to Shutterfly, and did the canvas, the wrapped canvas, and then I also have matted framed ones on the other side, and they did a fantastic job. They turned out awesome. <laughs> Go walk that puppy. 
We'll go walk that puppy. She needs her daily walk. <laughs> Limitless Lindy, what did you say? 500 pounds down. How, how did I, I didn't see that part. I am so sorry. Wow. That is amazing. Way to go, you. I hate that we're not going to be there to meet you. Maybe you can come to one of the other events. We're going to be at Las Vegas. Uh, and then we're also going to do a meetup in San Antonio in April. And where else are we going to be? Uh, Keto Palooza in October, which is in Kentucky, Louisville, Kentucky. And then we're doing an event in Dixon, Tennessee. I think that's it. But maybe we can meet you there. I know. I love this shirt. I can't believe that this is the very first time I've worn this. It's super oversized. Let me stand up. I just want to show off this shirt that I've had for a year and never worn. Look at that. It's super. It's like a boyfriend shirt. Really oversized. It looks like I took Ken's button-up shirt and put, I bedazzled it. I bedazzled it. Ugh, I'm so tongue-tied today. I need to eat. I'm not eating today. Also, I just want to Let's talk about something for a minute. So this is a funny little thing that has happened so many times to me, and I think it's hilarious. So when I do what I eat in a day videos, often I will get the comment if I eat like bacon and eggs, two eggs and, and a pile of bacon, I often get told that that is not enough food, which I'm a tiny person. Like I'm five foot two, I weigh 112 pounds, like I'm little. Here's what I don't get. Here's what I don't understand. Please explain this to me. Peanut. This is the peanut gallery. Like, I don't take offense to this stuff because it's just peanut gallery stuff. Like, whatever. But I think it's so funny that people will say, <laughs> that's not enough food. But if I was fasting and I was like, I'm not going to eat all day, people would be like, yay. Don't, you didn't eat anything. You did OMAD. Like, what? I'm sorry. That doesn't make any sense to me. Can y'all explain? Like, I ate a normal amount of food. That's not enough food. But if I was, I fasted for 24 hours. That's awesome. We're all going to applaud that. I'm sorry. I just don't get it. Anyways, that's just something that I find <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> Toto. Toto, come, come here. Lily, come. Lily wants to go with Ken to the woods. <laughs> that's her, what she wants. Uh, topical keratins? No, I do not. I'm sorry, but also probably not a necessary thing. Um, Ken's shirt for special nights. Yeah, that's what this is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hey, what's up? Thank you for the super chat. My wife is thinking about joining your private group. I'll keep encouraging her. Awesome. Let her, let her know she is welcome. And she can send me a message when she gets in there. She can also send Dr. Barry a message. Lily. Hello. I know. I know. <laughs> right? The cognitive dissonance. It's just so funny. <laughs> yeah, this is why I don't like to talk about keto carnivore anymore. I'm just, it's exhausting. But you guys are cool. You guys are cool. I love you. I love you. All right. Uh, we got about 10 minutes left. What do you guys want to talk about? Do you want me to do lives more? Also, can we, like, do more fun stuff? Can we do fun? You want to get ready with me? Maybe. I don't know. I really want to talk about things that have that are not meat. <laughs> Aren't you guys bored? I'm bored. But I've been talking about this stuff for seven years, and I talk about it all the time in the group. Like, that's my full-time job. I want to have fun on YouTube. And you guys can come talk to me in the group, and I don't mind answering your questions. I really don't. I don't want you to think that I don't like you. I love you. But it's like, don't you guys kind of need a break from that? And some, like, fun stuff? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I love talking about... Why did that not click on you? Stoicism. Um, we can talk about that next time. For sure. Are you coming to Universal or Disney? No, we're going to Dollywood. I have season tickets to Dollywood. Who wants to meet me at Dollywood? It's so much better than Disney. I promise. <laughs> it's so good. Amazing food. Amazing music. Amazing rides. Like the rides at Dollywood are really, really good. 
I love staying at her hotel. If you've never been to Dollywood and you've never been to the Dream More, Alyssa, let's go. Name a day. I'm not kidding. Bring the kids. I'm not kidding. I am not kidding. <laughs> yeah, so we got season tickets. I bought season tickets. That was my Christmas present to me and my mom. I bought her season passes and me season passes so we could take the kids. And yeah, so let's go, guys. Let's go to Dollywood. <clears throat> so she has two hotels on the property. Uh, Dream More and then the other one, I can't remember what it's called. Song, song, something it has to do with music. And it's more of like a rustic cabin. It's more adulty, but Dream More is like beautiful. And there's a, there's a good restaurant and they have activities for the kids all day, every day. There's stuff for the kids to do. And then you can ride the trolley to Dollywood. It's right there. And then they'll bring you back. And Oh, it's so good. So I don't, I've never been to Silver Dollar City, but Dollywood used to be Silver Dollar City in Gatlinburg. And then she bought it in 1986, the year I was born. Um, is that a coincidence? I think not. <laughs> and so it's technically it used to be Silver Dollar City and now it's Dollywood. So I would like to go to Silver Dollar City. My cousins have been and they said it was amazing. It's very similar from what I've heard. How far is Dollywood from Dixon? Uh, it's probably about three hours. So when we start, and we're in middle West Tennessee, and when we drive, it's about a four-hour drive for us, but there's a Bucky's on the way. <laughs> so we stop at Bucky's and we get some brisket, and we take a little break, and the kids walk around, and we just kind of like stretch our legs, and then we keep going. We're really, we love it. Isaac. Are you a fan of C.S. Lewis or J.R.R. Tolkien? Yes, I'm a fan of both. Absolutely love. So I would say my Roman Empire is Chronicles of Narnia. It's the book series that really made me fall in love with books. And that was a long time ago. I was, I was 10, maybe. I was small. And I still have my original copies of the Chronicles. They're all paperback, but they were a box set that I got at a book fair like, I remember, vividly remember these books, okay? And I loved every single one of them. Like, um, The Magician's Nephew is underrated. People always talk about The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, which, yes, it's amazing, but I love The Magician's Nephew. I loved it. And I don't understand why no one's made that into a movie. <laughs> I just don't understand it. And all the Tolkien, so these right here, these are my Tolkien's. They're special edition, leather bound. They're beautiful and they smell amazing. But yes, absolutely. Love them both. And I think they were friends, right? I think I read a article about how they were friends. You went to a school named after the Chronicles of Narnia? What? That's cool. Yes, brisket at Bucky's. All right, but you have to go up. So they pre-make the sandwich and, and stuff. But if you go up and you talk to the people working and you say, hey, can I get, you know, a pound of brisket or however much you want and fatty brisket, no sauce. They'll d put it in a little dish for you and then you can get a fork and you can eat it. And it's amazing. I have a candle that smells like books. I have two. <laughs> it's up there somewhere. Come to London, Jane. I'm coming to London in May. I am. I'll be there. Don't get me started on another series of books. If you haven't read those, they're young adult. Chronicles of Narnia, they're young adult. And they're based on, uh, kind of like, loosely about the Bible. So the lion represents Jesus and... Like there's a lot of symbolism in it, and I just absolutely loved. But I still, I've read, I, me and Beckett have read The Magician's Nephew and The Chronicle and the, <laughs> and the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. We've actually read that one twice. He loved it so much that so we read it twice. I read it to him. He didn't read it. Okay, but he loved it. I bet, Isaac, I bet we had the same one. I wish I had it. It's it's not here. It's it's at my mom's house. 
I need to get that and bring it because they are ratty, tatty. They have been well loved. They're falling apart. <laughs> Makeup and hair care video. I haven't done, you haven't done one of those in a while. I know because I feel like nobody wanted to watch them. Every time I posted them, I'm like nobody watched them. But nobody watches my book reviews either. Well, no, that's not true. Some of you do, but it's not like the popular ones. Everybody wants me to talk about keto, and I'm sorry. I just don't know. I do that in the group. Um, but, yeah, I'll do that because I don't care anymore. I'm not I'm not making videos for views anymore. I'm making videos for me. And if you enjoy them, you do. And if you don't, then there's plenty of other channels on YouTube, I'm sure, that you can find. <clears throat> Enoch. I haven't started that one. But I've heard it's really, really good. Uh, Sharon, yes, I use beef tallow on my skin every night. No, 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 not beef tallow. I use lard. I don't have any. Sometimes I have it sitting here because I use it as chapstick too. It's from Faro. And it is bacon fat. <laughs> and yeah, that's my moisturizer of choice. Skincare routine, yes. Okay. Okay. Okay, guys. Are you buying any new clothes for your trips? No. Not for Vegas. Well, I mean, I don't know. I like, my style is really weird right now. I can't find anything that I love and I'm not going to just buy clothes for the sake of buying clothes. But I have a lot of really cool stuff in my closet that needs to get worn anyway. So, probably not going to buy anything new for this. But I hope we can go to the beach this year. I really need... I need some vitamin C. You know what I'm saying? Neely! Hey, girl, hey! We listened to all Narnia audiobooks recently with the kids. Also just finished the Wing Feather Saga. I've heard of that. Apparently it's supposed to be amazing. Um, yes, that's on my list. The Wing Feather Saga. Someone else told me about that, too. So we're going to start that one. I actually just did, Betsy, a house update on my, the vlog that I'm currently doing right now. Also, let me get a, let me get a clip of you guys. You guys want to be in the vlog? <laughs> this is my camera. This is my vlog camera. Why did I put that that way? I don't need that. Everybody say hi to the vlog, YouTube Live. This is the camera I use in case you, anybody is wondering. This is a Sony ZV-1M2. Oh, yeah. So, Mary Kubeka, apparently, she's really big right now. I haven't started any of hers, but I want to. Ha, <laughs> Catherine. Are the kids going to Vegas with the young kid? No. No. We're going to have some mommy daddy time, okay? In Vegas. Thank you so much, Jamie. To those of you who watch the the books, the book reviews, I love you. You're the VIPs. You're the best. Those of you who leave comments, even better. Those of you who hit the thumb it, thumb and comment, I love you. You're my favorite people in the world. Oh, Edna's reading the women. You're going to, oh, you do love it. Already love it. I know it's so good. <sighs> right? That's what I like about live streams. I want it to be like girl talk. Let's have girl talk. You know what I mean? Let's have a chat. Let's chill out. Let's talk about fun stuff. That's exact Brody. That is what I told Beckett because he said, why can't I go to Las Vegas with you? And I said, They're, they don't allow kids there. And I, def I would not take them. I just wouldn't. I don't even know uh, what to expect. I've never been to Vegas. But in my head, it's a lot of hedonism. <laughs> and I, just, I don't know what they would even see. And I don't, I don't want to put them in that predicament, right? <clears throat> yes, the silent patient. OMG. You're, it's so good. Indigo Neely is reading Court of Thorns and Roses. Girl, send me a message after you finish it and tell me, tell me where you're at on the obsession level. You're, you're gonna, you're welcome. Thank you, Janine. I appreciate when you guys leave comments on my videos. It really means a lot to me. Even if I don't 
heart it or, or comment back. I promise you, I read them all. I read them all. <clears throat> Guys, do you follow Indigo Neely? If you, if you don't, you need to. She's amazing and I love her. Alyssa's going to be in Vegas with me too. Coach Alyssa and Coach Nisha. We're going to have, we're going to have fun. We're going to have fun. Tanya, I'm so glad you brought this up. Do book fairs still exist in schools? Because my kids are homeschooled. And I wish the libraries would do book fairs. Because that was core memories for me. You guys don't understand. this. My obsession with reading, this is not new. All I did as a child was read. I had nothing else to do. I was an only child. We live in the middle of nowhere. Like, I didn't have a lot of friends. Okay, books were my friends. These are my best friends. I have one best friend. And a lot of, I have friends now, like, you know what I mean? But like, when I was little, I was weird. I was the only child. I was a bit awkward. I had opinions, like I do now. This is nothing new. <laughs> Me saying exactly what I think with no filter. That's, that's just who I've been my whole life. Anyways, core memories. You do still have book fairs? That's great. That's so exciting. Um. If anybody local is watching, if you guys have a book fair at the elementary school, can you invite me? <laughs> I want to bring the kids. <laughs> this is why we're friends. I know. I know. Oh, really? I need to talk to the local library and see. <clears throat> Only Child Club. Who's Who else? Any other members of the Only Child Club? <laughs> We're going to go over time today, and I don't care. I have nothing else to do. Well, that's not true. I have other things I should be doing, but I don't want to. We have finally got to the fun part of the conversation, and I'm here for it. I'm not going to leave. Uh, Alyssa, are you an only child? That makes so much sense. Now now I just know. There's, yep, that's us. Okay. Yes. Only child club. Yay. <laughs> yes, the Scholastic Books. Those were the books, book fairs that we had. And what was so funny to me is so many of the kids would buy, you know, how they had junk there, like really weird toys that were educational toys, but not really made that well. Everybody would buy those. And I'm like, look at all these books. Why are you guys not reading books? Why are you not buying books? It's a book fair. It was not popular. <laughs> that was not popular. <laughs> Beckett was nearly an only child. Technically, he wouldn't have been, but you know, he would have. Ten he would have been. Toys were fun. I to me, they weren't. I don't know. I was weird. <laughs> Casey, the three D posters, the three D books. Do you guys remember that? You would like hold them in front of your face, cross your eyes, and then move them back. Do you guys remember doing that? I got so sick. Like they made me nauseous. <laughs> I did them anyways because that was weird. Oh, girl. Resand. You're on the first book. I'm not going to tell you anything. I'm just going to tell you. It only goes up from here. Okay. It only goes up. <clears throat> Re <laughs> mm -mm 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 -mm. He's... Yay, Yana! Have a 16-month-old baby and feeding him the kindergenic way. I love that. Karen just read The Housemaid. Awesome. Thoroughly enjoying being read, too. It's nice, right? Especially when you're in bed or you're busy doing things. When I'm doing the laundry, when I'm doing the dishes, when I'm picking the toys up for the 25th time and, you know, by 10 a.m., I always put one in so I can hear the kids. So if, like Beckett's talking to me, I'm not ignoring him, right? I can hear him and then I'll just pause it. And then when he goes back to like doing whatever it is that he's doing, we turn it back on. <clears throat> what was my favorite childhood movie? Mm, um, I don't know. That's a hard question. I don't know. I love the never ending story. 
Yes, that's right, right? The Never Ending Story. That was one of my top movies. That was probably my favorite. And then when I was in like junior high, <laughs> my favorite movie I watched literally every single day one summer, uh, The Princess Bride. I can quote that entire movie. The entire movie. I am a writer, actually. I'm working on two books right now. I'm working on my recipe books, which is also homesteading and lifestyle and wardrobe and like stuff that I do. Just my it's my channel essentially turned into a book, but then I'm I'm working on a fiction book too. That's a thriller. Cause that's my favorite genre, honestly. I love thrillers and historical fiction, but I'm I'm not <laughs> I could never, I could never write a historical fiction book, but I am working on a thriller. <laughs> I, yeah, I loved Hercules too. There is a quote for everything from The Princess Bride, literally everything. Yeah, the second never ending story was terrible, but the first one, amazing. Uh, I think my camera's right is mirrored, so it looks like it's on the wrong side, probably. <clears throat> oh, love the labyrinth, love the dark crystal, love fantasy movies for sure. Girl, same the bone carver, and Bri I think I, is is that an only child thing that we like the really missed? I don't know why they just were and the surreal. Like the, every character, and if you haven't, if y'all don't know what I'm talking about, we're talking about Akatar, A Court of Thorns and Roses, which is a book series that is fantasy slash romance. <laughs> it will get you right here. Who's your favorite character in Akatar? I finished it and I love Nessa. When I read it the first time, I did not love Nesta. And the longer I thought about it, the more. I saw myself in her. And so like the part of me that hated her, hated those parts of me that were in, they're in my past now. Like we're better, <laughs> we're growing. And the part of me that loves her is like, yeah, I get you. I've been there. We're very angry all the time. I get it. We're growing. So I really loved Nesta and her character and the story that they told, but <laughs> the bone carver, right. You don't, if you don't know what we're talking about, that sounds crazy, but it's, it's a weird, part of the book it's a character anyways <laughs> we're not going to spoil anything here for anybody but uh yeah nesta really was a standout character but i love Feyre, and i have the moon tattoo like i'm Feyre. i would like i'm, I'm probably not Feyre. <laughs> i want to be Feyre. <laughs> i'm probably more nesta <laughs> Thank you. Y'all, I'm so glad I put this shirt on because you really like it. And it's just been sitting in my closet getting no love. <laughs> I'm just going to start wearing the clothes for live streams that I never wear. That just get abandoned in my closet. Karen, yeah, me too. A good thriller with a plot twist that is like, whoa. That's the silent patient for me. That one, um, the housemaid was pretty good. Not as good as the silent patient. Pretty girls. Pretty girls. The plot twist. Trigger warnings, though. Look up trigger warnings for pretty girls. Oh, I love Armin, too. I don't know. I like them all. I like them all. I like them all. Yeah, I'm going to start the teacher to when I finish just the nicest couple. I accidentally downloaded this on Audible, and then I looked at my bookshelf to, on my TBR, which is up here. You can't see it. That's my TBR. And I was like, oh, I bought that. So I actually have the physical copy and I wasted a credit on the Audible and I don't like the narration at all. So I'm going to switch over to physical copy now. I got big feelings about Verity. So I had never read anything from Colleen Hoover ever. And when Verity came out, I was pregnant with Bonnie. And I didn't know anything about it going in. It was a cold pick. I just was like, oh, Verity. And I, I had a lot of really good reviews. And I was like, okay, thriller, check. 
Good reviews. Check. Okay. I was not prepared for everything that book served up. It was awful and I loved it. It is so dark and twisted and, but I mean, I could not stop reading it, but it freaked me out. I was home alone. Ken was out of town. I was pregnant. And if you've read this book, you understand like, that's not a good time to read Verity. Okay. If you're pregnant, do not read Verity. Don't do that. I didn't know what I was signing up for. I literally was scared in my room when uh, like a noise happened in my house. That's how much that book got me. I loved it, hated it. It's weird, but it was a good one. Oh yeah, I'm probably gonna do that actually. Uh, do you know Haya Kid Vitamins shipping to Canada? I, I'm not sure, I don't think so. Wait, no, actually someone in the community messaged me and said that they reached out to Haya and they were gonna hook them up. So find their customer service and send them a message because I think she worked something out about getting them sent to Canada, I think. <clears throat> oh, I don't, I didn't like any of the people in Verity. I thought they were all awful. Thank you. I think I knew that. I just forgot. I haven't returned a book in a long time. I usually love them. Elantra. Chronicles of Elantra by Michelle Sagara. No. I haven't. I don't have a pen. I'm unprepared today. Uh, I will come back and look through the comments and write that down. Mark of the Lion series. No. I haven't read that one either. The Shining. I have not read any of Stephen King's books, but someone told me I should read Holly and I should read Fairy Tale. So they're on my list, but I've never ever read any of his books. I don't like horror movies, um, and I don't think Fairy Tale and Holly are horror. I think they're suspense, and I don't mind that. But I can't read it. Like I'm not Pet Cemetery things like that. No, 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 no. Never gonna do it. <clears throat> I know. And can you believe it? I've read tons of paranormal stuff. Like, I've read everything Anne Rice put out because I went through... We all went through our Twilight phase, didn't we? Okay. Yes. And so I read all of Anne Rice books, which some are <laughs> really, really weird. But I read them all. But I never got around to Stephen King. I don't know. <clears throat> High Mountain Court. I have not read that one either. I do need to read Shawshank Redemption, I think. Why are we the same? I know. Are we twins? Did we just become best friends? Okay, by the way, I quote, <laughs> I quote movies all the time. I love movies and I love books. I love both. Um... I will quote Will Ferrell books. Will Ferrell, I never, he will never write a book. Does he have a book? I would probably read it if Will Ferrell wrote a book. I would probably read it. But he's, he's my favorite. But if you have watched Step Brothers and you know that part where they're like, do we just become best friends? If you read A Court of Thorns and Roses and you meet someone who has also read A Court of Thorns and Roses, you're immediately best friends because you have so many things. So many things to talk about. <laughs> What are your favorite movies? I have like a trillion movies. Hunger Games, books and movies. Um, loved The Ballad. I read that in 2020 when it came out. The Ballad of Songbird and Snakes. That was so good. And the movie was great too. I thought they did a good job. Oh, movies. I don't know. I got so many. Breakfast at Tiffany's. Uh, bringing Up Baby. I love old movies and new movies. Like I, I love them all. But I really love old classic films like Cary Grant, um, Audrey Hepburn, Katherine Hepburn. Ah! I love her laugh. And if, if you've not watched Bring It Up, Baby, please do. Please go watch that. I 
I love that you guys are having fun. Are you guys having fun? I'm having fun. Angela, is it bad that I have not read any of the Harry Potter books? My daughter-in-law is begging me to read them and manacled so she can talk with me about them. Yes, read them. They're really good. I read those, you know, ages, ages ago. <laughs> like when I was in high school. Uh, but the books, if you love the movies, the books are like bonus footage, basically. Because there's so much that get left out of the movies. They're so good. I haven't read Manacled yet. But one of my, the girl, my friend who does my nails was telling me all about it. So I'm sure eventually I will, I will read that too. Sabrina. Yes. Sabrina. One of my all time favorite movies ever. Although it is a bit odd. If you think about it. The original with Audrey Hepburn and, um, what's his name? Casablanca guy. What's his name? He's so much older than her. <laughs> Alyssa, what are you doing? What are you doing? Read them. It is. It's one of the funniest movies. The timing in that is so good. Um, what's the other one with Katherine Hepburn and Cary Grant and Philadelphia Story? Is that right? I love it. Oh, I could watch that a thousand times. I'm pretty sure it's Philadelphia Story. Hang on. You guys, put, I hope you're writing these down because I'm giving you homework. How do you spell Philadelphia? I just realized I don't know how to spell Philadelphia. <laughs> um, true story. I'm really bad at spelling. Yes. The Philadelphia story. It's got Cary Grant, uh, Catherine Hepburn, and Jimmy Stewart. What more do you need? And it's like a love triangle. And it's hilarious. It's hilarious. And she there's this scene where she's drunk and like just <laughs> acting ridiculous. I, don't know, I love Catherine Hepburn. Oh, Tracy, you're welcome. I feel like no one but me says these things. <laughs> so last night somebody said, what? I don't like ribeyes. What can I eat? How can I get my fat in? And I said, unpopular opinion. I don't like ribeyes, but I'd love filet mignon. So to add fat, I just add butter and stuff like that. And you don't have to eat fatty ribeyes. You can eat whatever steak that you like and add your fat to it with sauces and butter and all the good things. Uh, bringing up baby. So that's also a comedy with Cap Catherine Hepburn, 1938. Oh, God. So good. It's got Catherine Hepburn, Cary Grant. Um, those are the main, like, big names, but how do I explain this? Cary Grant is a paleontologist and she's this high strung crazy woman and they have this cheetah that they are taking care of and it's them like running all over the place with this cheetah. The cheetah's name is Baby <laughs> and it's kind of like a love story too wrapped into a comedy. Also, what's the one with Marilyn where... Uh, Oh, what is the one where the men are dressed as women? They're, like, trying to get away. They're criminals. Tell me you know what I'm talking about. Some like it hot. Some like it hot. Also amazing. Marilyn's cool in it, but she's not the best part. <clears throat> she's not the best part. So, who, is, who are the men? Um, who are the men? 1959, and it has Jack Lemon and Tony Curtis, Marilyn Monroe. Those are the top three. And it is just hilarious. I could watch that over and over again. I might watch that today. Tony Curtis, yes. So, that's Jamie Lee Curtis's. Is that her dad or her grandpa? I can't remember. I think 
related to Jamie Lee Curtis, I'm pretty sure. But they are both so fantastic in that movie. It just... On Golden Pond, yeah, if you want to cry your eyes out, you can watch that one. <laughs> that it, it is her dad. Okay. Right. All right. I thought so. It happened one night. Yeah. I like that one, too. It's not one of my favorites, but I like it. No, not the odd couple, but that's a good one, too. <laughs> His Girl Friday. I don't know that I've ever watched that one. I've never seen Pillow Talk either. Really, there's so many movies I haven't seen. Those are my favorites. Ones that I could watch over and over again. Also, Avengers. I could literally watch Avengers. All of them. Except for the new ones. I don't love the new ones. They're really not that good. Like, after Endgame, things went downhill, if you ask me. But all the, all the first... And second phase movies I loved. But once we were done with Endgame, everything got weird and I don't like them. But I could watch all the Spider-Mans over and over again. I could watch all the, the Avengers, all the Iron Mans, Thor Ragnarok. That was a good one. I didn't love the first or third one, but they were good. Star Wars. Not a huge Star Wars fan. I have watched them all, but I don't know. They're just a little too much for me. There's so much going on in those movies and the way that they're filmed. That's a very specific type of person that loves Star Wars, and I just don't fall into that category, I guess. The way that, like, the cuts, it seems so old, you know? Like, if, even the new movies seem like they were filmed when the original movies do. And I, I get the nostalgia, but I don't like it. Love Forrest Gump. Yeah. <laughs> when you reviewed Court of Thorns and Roses, I thought you were going to eat that book. <laughs> if I could eat it, I would. If I could drink it, I would. Sixth Element, that was a good one, too. Ugh, oh, right, Jar Jar was the worst. <laughs> love Lord of the Rings. I love most of those type of movies, but I just don't. I don't know. I can't get I can't get into Star Wars. Yeah, Game of Thrones. They totally kept me till the last series and the last episode, and then I was like, I've just wasted so much of my life because you did not give me what I wanted. Eating books isn't keto. It definitely is not. <laughs> I love you, Neely. <clears throat> See, I'm a Pride and Prejudice with Kieran Knightley and Matthew McFadden. And there are people who prefer the other one with, uh, I can't remember what his name is, but I could watch... Kira Knightley's Pride and Prejudice every day, probably, and never get bored with it. Yes, the GOT books are way better. Uh, I made the mistake of trying to listen to them on Audible, and the narrator is horrible. And the voice that he gives Khaleesi Daenerys is the worst. I, I don't know why he did that to her character, but he makes her sound just, I don't know... It is awful. Anyways, but I loved uh, Dance of the Dragons. That's on. That's on my bookshelf. Over here somewhere. My, yeah, I have. Let's see. What have I got up here? I've got Jane R. Withering Heights. Uh, Pride and Prejudice. Jane Austen, the complete, not the, it's a big one that has all of them in there, the complete novels. Oh, The Brothers Grimm. Edgar Allan Poe. Walt Whitman. Oh, I have a lot up there, and not nearly as many as I want. Mmm, yes, I'm very ready for Emily in Paris next season to come out. That's a guilty pleasure. I feel awful. 
Like, I hate watch it. You know, <laughs> it's not good, but it is. I don't know. I love it. And I love the scenery and the fashion. <clears throat> Right. He's going to have a heart attack. Someone give the author of GOT, what's his name? G-R-R Martin. He needs some carnivore. I'm, I'm, I'm figuring for his life. I'm not kidding. Like, we're not going to get that book. He's going to have a heart attack. He is unhealthy. Harry Dredson. No, I have not. <laughs> Why aren't you a model? Um, <laughs> apparently, I, I don't know. No one's, no one thinks I'm model status. And I don't think I could do that as a full-time job. Just have people take pictures of me. Which sounds weird because I'm on video. It's different. It's not the same. We went for a photo shoot at Keto Chow headquarters. And I was just like. I don't know how to pose. Really, honestly. Right? Oh, Serena, I love you. All right, Harry Dredson. <laughs> yeah, Ken Berry would definitely make fun of me for watching Emily and Harris, but I don't care. I also watched Sex in the City. Well, what's the new one? Just like, and just like that, which the first season I didn't like, but the last season, it was okay. What's a Whovian? Is that Doctor Who? <clears throat> I've seen a few episodes, and I think I would like the season with... Oh, what's his name? He was in Harry Potter. He's a really amazing stage actor. He played in Hamlet. But he's amazing, and I love him. So... Hey, CJ, what's Ken in your story? We actually did a video when I was pregnant with Beckett that kind of goes, David Tennant, yes, David Tennant, um, goes through our story, like how we met. I don't remember what the name of it was. It was a live stream, I think. Or no, we're making guacamole. That's what we're doing. That was four years ago, I think. <clears throat> Yes, David Tennant. I just love him. He's so incredible. I can just watch his face all day. Did you know that his son was in the new Game of Thrones? He plays one of the Targaryens. The young Targaryen. Can't remember what his name is, but I didn't know that was his son. And then I saw a picture of him at a keto not keto con <laughs> comic con with him and I was like, Oh, that's really cool. <clears throat> I should hang out with you guys more often. You guys are fun. Progress on the house, but not not a lot, honestly. White Lotus was amazing. I loved White Lotus. It was so good. What's Beckett's favorite movie, show, book? He loves these books. There's a series, so it's the... Sour Grape, The Couch Potato, The Bad Seed, The Smart Cookie, The I think there's one more, but there's a series and they're so good for kids to like understand these emotions and feelings and stuff like that. And then he really likes all books, really loves Dr. Seuss. Just because they're funny and they rhyme. I don't think he actually likes them, though. I think he just likes me to roll my... I hate reading Dr. Seuss to him. I'm going to hide them. I'm so sick of reading Great Eggs on him. I really hate it. Uh, Good Egg. Yes, that's the other one. Good Egg. So if you have a grandchild and you want to buy them some books, those are the best books ever. Smart Cookie. Sour Grape is his favorite. Good Egg. Bad Seed. And they're just... They teach lessons. And they're funny to read. They're fun. I don't mind reading them. <clears throat> you know, I've never watched Gilmore Girls, really. I think I've watched... I mean, I've watched it, but I've... 
not really. Like, I couldn't tell you anything other than Rory named her kid after her own name, Rory, and I always found that very odd. <laughs> What's the mom's name? Like, she named, like, Rory and Rory, right? But, like, the mom is called something else, but, right? That's all I remember about that show, and that she loved coffee, and the younger Rory was really smart. Lorelai, right, mm -hmm. but like, they have the same name. Is that not right? Maybe not. <laughs> Dragons love tacos and secret pizza party. I don't have those two. I'll put them on my list because we're running a, we read every night. We read two books a night, me and Beckett and Bonnie. She's not there yet. You know, she wants to just do whatever she wants to do. She's not going to sit down. Uh, I'm drinking Element, by the way. I didn't say that, but I think most of you probably assume that's what I was drinking. Um, and we've run out of books. But we're, I got him chapter books. I got him Indian in the Cupboard. And we are going through the Chronicles of Narnia. And But the smaller books, we've read over and over again. He loves Where the Wild Things Are. He loves Alexander and the No Good, Terrible, Horrible, Bad Day. I think I said that wrong. He loves that one. We read that one a lot because Beck, <laughs> he has no good, terrible, very bad days. A lot. He's just very, he's at that age where his emotions are coming and he doesn't know how to, he's got big feelings, right? So we read that book often and try to talk, you know, sometimes we have bad days, but we, we can't let that overcome us, right? Okay, so. Those are his favorites right now. We need some more books. What style do you teach for reading and writing? So my mom is a retired teacher and she does their homeschooling, like their structured homeschooling. And then mostly I just focus on re-iterating uh, that stuff. So focusing on reading and focusing on uh, like Bonnie just learning her shapes now. She already knows all her colors. We're, she knows her ABCs, but she's, she can't say them that well. She knows... Her one, two, three, four, fives, but, you know, she wants to say the same numbers over and over again and those kind of basic things. Oh, Betsy, those were some of my first books. So American Girl now was more popular for the dolls, which is upsetting to me as a 90s baby who grew up with Samantha, okay, and all the American Girl stories, which are historical fiction for young, young girls. So I would think, I don't know, fourth, fifth grade maybe? I'm so mad that the dolls have taken over the books. It's super annoying. Anyways, I love that those. I still have all of those too. My original All-American Girls have all of them. Going to pass them down to Bonnie. And we, jo Josephine, Josephina was one, or Josefina, I guess is how you're supposed to pronounce it. She was one of my favorites. I loved Samantha, which she was the Victorian era. Uh, I loved all the American Girl series. And we have an American doll store in Nashville, but I'm putting that off for as long as possible because they're crazy. Pirates Don't Babysit and Pirates Don't Change Stoppers are great kids' book if a mouse ate a muffin and similar ones to those series. Yeah. I haven't read those. I will put those down. Are there any millennials in the chat? I know Alyssa is a millennial. Do you guys remember Lurleen McDaniel books? <laughs> Please tell me someone knows what I'm talking about. Fudge and Super Fudge. Oh my gosh, you're right. Those were those are good books. Y'all have really good ideas. Thank you. Lurleen McDaniel. Anybody? Anybody? Please tell me someone else knows who I'm talking about. The Lurleen McDaniel books. You don't know these books? Okay. I'm going to look them up. <coughs> Lurleen. I don't even know how to, how to pronounce, how to spell this word. I'm Also, my phone is going crazy. Is Apple coming out with a new one? Lurleen McDaniel. She wrote these... <laughs> tragic, tragic love story. That's the author. Lurleen McDaniel is the author. And she wrote these horrible YA romances that are based on 
like someone has cancer and someone is dying and it's anyways when I was in eighth grade all the girls that's what they read oh my gosh they were horrible to live again till death do us part don't die my love like these are the titles of these books <laughs> they were a Time to Die. I remember very vividly going and get, getting this out of our library at school. And this is the cover. I'm going to show it. Somewhat, I can't believe no one knows what I'm talking about. A Time to Die. Okay. Lorraine McDaniel. There was <laughs> one Last Wish. These are like kids that... Why, why were these books written? Anyways, they were... You remember them? Thank you. Someone else remembers them. They were so horrible. I don't know why. Oh, yeah. We did Left Behind, too. We all read Left Behind. These were romances for young adults, but they were based around death. It was horrible. <laughs> A Time to Die. Yeah, I know. This came before. This was in 1995. I can't believe my parents let me read them either. I don't think they knew what they were about until I was like crying my eyes out. I'm pretty sure I cried. <laughs> no one, no one in eighth grade needs that kind of emotional trauma. They were horrible. Oh, Allison, that's a really good one. Tuck Everlasting. A Wrinkle in Time. That's another one that I really loved when I was younger. I think Beckett would love A Wrinkle in Time. How to Eat Fried Worm Rings. What? I don't know what that one is. <clears throat> yeah, we all all did magic. School bus, goosebumps. Do you guys remember the Pick Your Path books? Do y'all you know what I'm talking about? Like you would read a chapter and then it would say, if you take the road, flip to page 91. If you take the boat, flip to the page 95 and then you would it was like an adventure those were so fun weren't they <laughs> did they make those anymore i haven't seen one of those in forever what were they called adventure books i don't know but they were so much choose your own adventure yes i loved those i had a goosebumps one and probably something else i'm sure but i remember i would <laughs> i cheated i would flip and see what would the outcome would be and i'd be like oh, no i don't want that outcome and then i would i would pick the outcome that i wanted i cheated <laughs> <clears throat> they do still make them. I'm going to get Beckett one. I think he would like that. <laughs> but I think he would be just like me and he would he's controlling. He, he wants to control the situation. He would be like, no, I don't like that one. Pick the other one. Goosebumps. There was one Goosebump that was a series of short stories put together. And there was one about a cat with nine lives. And the cat was kill trying to kill its owner. It was like nine lives, nine lives left. Mine is thine and thine is mine. And that story, it stays in my head rent free to this day. It scared me so much because I had cats and I loved my cats. And this cat in this story terrified me. I still read it multiple times. I don't know why, but that is stuck in my head. I am 38. I read that when I was probably nine. Why do I still remember that? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> vivid, vivid memory of this stupid cat story. <laughs> hey, Ashley, we're just hanging out. What's going on with you? I feel like we should do one of these with a glass of wine. Oh, are you afraid of the dark? The shows were weird, too. The Goosebumps shows and Are You Afraid of the Dark shows. I didn't have access to those, by the way. I was poor, and we did not have cable. We had Channel 17, and I had to hit the TV to get Power Rangers. Okay, I didn't get to watch Disney Channel and Nickelodeon, and I didn't get any of that unless I was at a friend's house. I didn't get to watch that stuff. So MTV, VH1, no, no. We didn't, Nisha didn't have that. We, we had Channel 17. Maybe sometimes if it was good weather and the aluminum foil was where it needed to be. 
<gasps> UPS is here. Wonder what I got. Oh, speaking of wine, I think that's my wine. So I get a subscription from Dry Farm Wine, which is no sugar added, low sugar, very low carb wine. I actually have a link in the description of the video that gives you, uh, you get a free, uh, no, a bottle for a penny with your subscription. Anyways, you can cancel anytime and you can like skip a month and there's no weird fees or anything. And I get the sparkling wine and it comes with four, three, six, I don't know. Anyways, you can get them every, every three months, every six months or every month, depending on what you want to do. Anyways, I'm pretty sure that's, that's what's coming. So that's exciting. I have a glass of wine with my book tonight. It doesn't give me headaches too. Regular wine, I can't drink. Nitrite free. Also, this wine is nitrite free. Nit I don't know. You can dryfarmwines.com. I think the link is in the description. You can go check them out. I don't get paid for saying this. I wish, and they don't send it to me for free. I pay for it. Um, please send me free wine. That would be awesome. It's not cheap, obviously. <clears throat> Dr. Berry is home from the woods. You know, it's funny. I call Ken Dr. Berry a lot. For, I don't know why. It's just, I've known him my whole life and he was Dr. Berry for most of that. And now he's Ken. Anyways, I think it's funny. People get really up in arms about that. Why is she calling her husband Dr. Berry? But if you watch older shows like Bridgerton or... Hey, do you remember the name of the show about the train, the guy who, I'm doing a horrible job explaining this, the one where they're new money, old money that we watched? Train? No, but there's a train, you know, the railway is, he's in charge of the railway. It's the, one of the only shows, that, The Gilded Age. That's it. You know, she calls him Mr. Whatever when they're amongst other people. And I just feel like that's kind of the same thing. I don't know what the big deal is. This was fun. Thank you guys for hanging out with me. It has been almost two hours. I guess you guys are probably tired of me at this point. I'm having fun. Yes, The Gilded Age. If you haven't watched that, I think it's on HBO. It is really, 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 really good. Right, exactly. <laughs> Y'all know him as Dr. Barry. I think. Like if I would just I don't know. Y'all are so sweet. Oh, Babysitter's Club, too. Do you guys remember Babysitter's Club and Sweet Valley High? I never read those, but I loved Babysitter's Club. <sighs> well, I'm super glad you guys hung out with me today. I had fun. I hope you had fun. I think maybe <laughs> if I push past an hour, the fun people hang out. We don't get so many, like... I'm stalled questions, which, like I said, I talk about in the group all the time. You can come hang out with me and we can actually talk through it. But out, out here, out here, it's fun. We're having fun. We're reading books. We're watching movies. We're doing more makeup. We're getting dressed. There is nothing wrong with reading trashy romance, Joanna. Live your life. Live your life. Okay, guys, I guess I'm going to hop off here. Thanks for hanging out with me. If you're new, hit the subscribe button. If you enjoyed this crazy live stream, maybe we'll do this again next week. If you're in the group, I'll see you tonight at 6 p.m. Love you. Mean it.